and gentlemen, welcome to our, our channel, 365 Trading Academy. And in today's video, as quickly as possible, I'm going to cover some few basic things. I want to talk to you guys about EURUSD uh, via scenario analysis. A couple of things to point out. Number one, last night, you know, Wednesday, we received uh, minutes of the Federal Open Market Committee. So I want to quickly just address those minutes. You know, what was said, have they changed their mind? Is there something to look for? Are there any red flags in the in the market? And so it's gonna be one chart on Euro USD, a quick breakdown. Inside the Euro USD chart right now, I wanna teach you guys a little bit of more smart money concepts. <clears throat> Specifically why I lost money on the chart and then how I, I made it back. Uh, and because we spoke about Euro USD during our traders war room on Sunday. And let me start off by just pulling out the big chart. So on Sunday, we looked at Euro USD. All right, we spoke about how you know what Powell had done the previous week, and then CPI specific, not Powell, CPI had almost reaffirmed this notion that inflation is peaking. Right, so we spoke about those kind of things, and we saw you know risk on rallies take place. Right, then I told you guys that this is where I'd love to sell in my yellow zones. Why my yellow zones are free of drama. They don't really are based on any type of recent data. They are purely of order flows, which is money that was placed there a long time ago. For example, on the 4th of July, um, um, uh, on the 27th of June this year, a bigger one on the 8th of June. Right? So these are big, big sell point areas that we've been waiting for. And what happened was, as soon as the CPI rally happened last week, which was, again, positive for the market because, again, CPI indicated that actually inflation was peaking and actually dropping, right? We had a break of structure here and, and markets chose to kind of like play along the lines of resistance, which is not really the type of trade I would like to look for in the marketplace. Um, and, and, and therefore, I was not, you know, triggered in any of these sell points. And we kind of like spoke about this. By the time we had our war room on Sunday, let's just quickly check the dates. Uh, you guys would have actually only gotten the war room on Monday, right? So the 14th, 15th, right? By the time this had happened already, markets on Thursday, Friday, the previous week, had already closed with a bearish engulfing pattern. So when I was doing the war room, this was already there, and I marked it in red because I'm not that excited to take a swing trade from there, right? It could work out. Right, so now we've got this incredible bullish engulfing pattern, a baseline for buyers on Euro USD, right? Remember, there are multiple, you know, governing demands that have been broken, but this red zone is where price bounced from, right? And that's a very significant demand area, weekly and monthly, nonetheless. And a daily, you know, uh, demand was put there in place. Let's just remove this, right? And then now we've got this intermediary zone here that was created as an original turn for me. But some people would have seen a lot of resistance and started to sell there, and good for them if they, if they sold there, you know, more money to the people. And so we've just been waiting, right? And a long time ago, we made this prediction that Euro, Bitcoin, all these things would keep making their way up, you know, if before CPI data dropped. Now, where are we, right? So then I then looked here. So when I came to my scenario analysis chart, which is always done on the one hour time frame, please don't forget on the channel, I've got, you know, incredible videos on this particular stuff on how I make my daily bread as an intraday trader. Now, let me just quickly remove this, because this wasn't there the first time. This was CPI, literally the day of CPI. As a supply and demand trader, as a supply and demand trader, when I see an order block and a beautiful imbalance like this, I don't ask questions. I never question anything. I put a pending order and I wait there. The only problem with this area of value, you know, later on in hindsight, the H1 to H2, there's confluence, H1 to H2 to H4, kinda, not really. That's the only problem. From H4 time frame, there really wasn't that much of confluence. Why? Because our order blocks require a specific type of imbalance. Yeah, okay, fine, maybe then H4, but it definitely gets murkier and murkier on the day, right? So, so that was my main problem. But nonetheless, I really like the imbalance so much so I was almost thoroughly confident that this was going to be a good place to buy. And literally, market opened at 9 a.m. the London session, and literally at 9 a.m., uh, just about two or three days ago, three days ago to be exact, on the Monday or Tuesday, pretty sure it was on Monday. Let's see. Yeah, on Monday. Yep, yeah, on Monday, uh, my, my, my pending order got hit, 
and my pending order was for a buy. I, I literally, you know, did my usual routine, and by the time I came back to check on the charts during the New York session, I had a stop loss hit. And that got me thinking, that's quite interesting. Um, um, I know why that happened. I just don't know why I didn't see it ahead of time. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Right, the idea of smart money contest, because what I do on our, on our YouTube channel most of the time is just supply and demand. And what my module three does is it brings in these smart money concepts, um, but I am more of a higher time frame trader anyways. But this is going to help you moving forward. So I'm just going to pull up the whiteboard and just slow down a bit and do some basic market structure teaching. This stuff you should already know. You should already know all this stuff. This is stuff I've taught you guys over and over again. Especially if you've done the course, you'll find a lot of this information in our module two, right, towards the end of our module two. Right, so markets moves in a specific structure. The structure is easily manipulated. It can change. You know, it can go up, it can go down, but it's always in zigzag. The relationship of that structure, no matter who says what, no matter who you learn from, whether you want to subscribe or you don't want to subscribe, this won't change anything. There is nothing that's going to change. This is from the pits, from the original market pits before computer-based trading even existed. And I'm saying this to say because I just watched a brilliant uh, YouTube documentary uh, posted on the public telegram for today about the pits and how all this trading stuff started. And inside the pit existed already supply and demand. And these are the things that drive the market. And you'll notice when I give my signals, I give them from a swing perspective. Uh, so I'm looking at daily, weekly, monthly, daily, weekly, monthly, because I know the type of win rate expectancy I can get from that. Now, but if you've got a smaller account or you just like more action in the market, the smaller time frames are going to be something over time that are going to draw you towards them. And so we need to couple our supply and demand trading with some smart money contests. And I'm going to start to bring this in little by little without taking away from those students who are waiting, you know, you know, for, for, for module three, etc. And today I just want to really talk to you guys about break off structure, BOS. And I'm sure you've seen me write this out on my chart, a lot of BOS. And also COCH, C-H-O-C-H, which is change of character. BOS talks about break off structure. C-H-O-C-H speaks about change of character and this is something you need to teach your eyes to do to always study structure the way i, I, I kind of like break it down by module two now i'm going to draw a basic structure <coughs> might not be feeling 100 percent today but i can i can attest i'm getting better and better every single day i am getting better and better every single day right so <coughs> let's basically draw a downward trend right a downward trend will be coming from obviously above, preferably being driven by supply, being pushed to a demand. Why? Because markets only move towards a demand or supply. This is why we are genuinely always as accurate as possible with where price is going because we understand the relationship between supply and demand. What we now want to understand is the pick off and the, you know, the, 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 the sensitive moments within the markets. When markets change due to sentiment or fundamentals or a shift happens in the market, to avoid that Euro USD buy trade I tried to take, but actually didn't do great in, right? So this is simple, right? So this is, uh, you know, a higher point, right? Markets are coming from a higher point, and this point here stops becoming, this becomes an LH, right? A lower high, why? Well, this high is lower than the previous high. And this is clearly, clearly as day, a lower low. I'm assuming you know the basics, right? I might have to, you might really have to consider with all your heart subscribing to my course. My course isn't about market structure based stuff. No, no, no. My course is about supply and demand, institutional trading, tracking order flows using supply and demand. But this basic stuff, you should find it in any free PDF, <clears throat> baby pips and all that kind of stuff, right? It's somewhere in there. But you need to understand how structure moves so you can implement your supply and demand trading accurately. Right, and then markets paid a new lower low somewhere here, uh, you know, so to speak. Uh, and then markets try to push up, right? As markets are pushing up, market stops, let's say, somewhere here. So now markets have established a new lower high. Why is this a new lower high? It's a lower high, an LH, because this high is lower than the previous high. And this is a lower low 
right? I hope you guys are with me. Lower low, right? Because this low is lower than this low. Now, if you're confused about this stuff, it means you are at the very beginning stages of your trading. Number one, that's okay. All right, absorb as much information as you can. I'll come back for you in another video, right? Absorb as much as you can. I'll come back for you in another video. But number two, it also means you really, really need to be one of those people trying to get a hold of the course, right? And then let's end this whole thing, right? Markets finally make you know, contact with the demand. And what happens to the demand? Markets start to move up, right? Move up because demand means buy supply means sell. And so we start to have this relationship where prices end into the upside. And all of a sudden, markets do this. This is predictable. This has to happen. Once a governing demand takes over, it means the institutions have changed the direction flow of capital. I'm going somewhere with this, right? Now, what you want to pay attention to is structure reading. The first thing that I want to highlight to your attention here is the fact that this low is considerably no longer a lower low if you look at where this low is, which is to say this low is a higher low. It's a higher low because it's technically higher than this low, but really, this low is higher than this low, right? But first of all, it's a higher low because it's higher than this low. But when you look at the overall structure, markets made up at made a point to close higher than this previous day. Here, we can move ahead. We can move ahead and just assume a couple of things about price. We're observing. We're observing. A supply and demand trader who's registered for my course would have taken a buy at the demand already. Now, that's someone who's already mastered the basics of my course. Someone who's then moved forward from mastering the basics of my course to mastering becoming a, a, a consistent, profitable trader would be planning on swinging by one because by one was at the lowest point in the chart. So you're holding that all the way to your supply, but would now want to start a, a quasi functioning version of compounding. So want to start to find more entries, more safe buy entries to ride the wave. Because that particular trader believes and understands that markets move from point A to B, they ebb and flow, but they ebb and flow between the confinement of supply and demand. Now, as this is happening, this first low, lower, higher low, this low here in the market that is now closed higher than the previous low, number one, but also now closed even higher than the last bigger structure low before price hit the demand. That low, some a smart trader, and you are all smart traders because every day, in every way, you are getting better and better as a trader. Right? This is where you start to unnotice that something is happening. Here. Fail. Price fails to create a new lower low. Markets have stopped going down. Why? It's, it's, it's nothing is random in the market. I know it's a it's a nice thing to say when everyone is consoling themselves for losing in the market. They say markets are random. You can't always be right. You cannot always be right in the market. I agree with that. Markets are not random. Human beings are random. Human beings participate in the market with their randomness. But markets are not random. Markets generally want to flow in, in, an, in an easy direction to simply make money based on what institutions are doing. So you want to actually stand it. Right. And then markets keep moving higher and higher. And all of a sudden, something like this happens. The markets come back down again, and something like this happens. And markets come down again up until we get to our supply. So a 365 trader would have three entries along the way. One entry here to take profit in the supply. And then there'll be multiple entries along the way where they're aiming for a risk reward ratio of one is to three, so that you are continually paying the cost of being in business and seeing your capital grow in the multiple entries as you hold the big cash, right? Trading is a game of patience. Now, real quick. This is will then be called a higher low. Why? This low is higher than this low. It's a higher low. And this low here will also be called a higher low simply because, again, this low is higher than this low, right? It's simple. As price is going up, there are a couple of things that we need to understand, whether it's going up or down. And that's what I want to talk about with you in this short video around break of structure and change of character, right? These are just simple technical things that are happening, that if you miss, which I missed, I missed it on Monday, 100% you'll pay the price. You will pay the price for missing the stuff, right? So once again, in the channel, all I can do on Sundays is just keep you guys an overall, you know, you know, overview of markets, 
you know, using supply and demand on higher time frames for swing trading because that's how we generate our annual money, right? Those swings last for long. If you follow them carefully, if you listen to me, we're talking about monetary policy divergence on JPY pairs. You guys should be holding those things with me as we've been holding from the beginning of the year. That's how we make our big money, right? Those are our pages. But in between, for intraday traders, this techno tectonic shifts, right, which are more sensitive, happen quickly. For example, in our structure, right, will this happen? And it happened immediately, quickly, and we need to observe it. Right, you see it from this lower high right here. If I was to draw a straight line like that, a blue straight line like that, this would indicate something to me. This would indicate, because remember, nine out of 10 times, uh, supply and demand traders, the structure that I'm drawing to you guys in Minecraft, there is a high chance that there is a supply here. It's me together, because all my supplies are here. Right, there's a very big chance that this is a supply. And so, if you make the mistake of buying here to take profit there and open a sell position there, you might get burnt because you may be mastered what supplies and demands for the chart, but you fully haven't mastered the intensity of market structure. Right, so this blue line is what we're going to call our COH, right? Our change of character. Our change of character, right? Our change of character. And maybe it's just best just with the abbreviations to save space. So the chart doesn't, the, the, the whiteboard doesn't go crowded, right? This is our change of character. And in this change of character, we have a, fa a fascinating thing. It's quite simple. It simply means that the supply was never going to hold, did not hold, and the reason for that is because markets have changed. The money driving price is a buyer's market, not a seller's market, which means this supply is only as good as its trend. It's only as good as its use. This supply is absolutely powerful if it is still supported by the continuation of lower highs and lower lows. If the continuation of price keeps coming down, coming down, this supply is not magnificent. But once that changes, you're in trouble. Leroy, how would I have known not to sell here at this supply? How would I have known that a change of character was going to happen before it happened? Well, there are a couple of things in front of you already in the chat. Number one, the person in control has changed, all right, all the way down here. When a big, significant demand, I'm talking daily, weekly, monthly, takes over your chart, you have to pay attention. Number two, the next confirmation was here, where price failed to create a new low. That failure to create a new low was more confluent and more evident that markets want to go up. Go up where? Well, again, if you take the course, we need to understand that there's always a higher supply somewhere that markets want to get to. So the change of character will result in a stop loss. It's for anyone trying to sell right there. And this is simple because as markets were going up, right, let's introduce the second concept. As markets were coming down, number one, a lot of things were clear. You see here, this is what you look for. This is a BOS. This is a break of structure. What does this mean? Price is coming down. Price creates a lower low. Price goes up. As it goes up and it comes back down again, it breaks the structure. This was not a trajectory point for price to bounce up. Those of you who are looking for support, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that, right? But let's get the video done, right? Those of you who are looking for support and all the stuff might have failed it because this is where a break of structure happened. So markets kept going down. A break of structure, very important. Hear me out here. This is, this is the big difference between these two things. Break of structure, the BOS. BOS, a break of structure is trend continuation. A break of structure highlights trend continuation. You would have known your trend, really speaking, if you're really a supply and demand trader, your trend is always given to you by who is in charge, what governor is in charge. If you've got a governor who is a supply or a governor who is a demand, that determines your trend. If you're like, what's a governor? Once again, you're not a registered student. A governor is a supply or demand fund on the highest time frame possible. Right, because that's where the most money is loaded, and that's where institutions take positional trades. Right, and we, we can track it through COT data, we can track it through market analysis on the chart, however you want to track it. That's how trends 
are created. Now, a break of structure is constant confirmation of trend continuation. Price was already coming from a supply. A supply will always break a downtrend. This downtrend here requires trend continuation. The trend continuation resulted in a break of structure. So markets broke structure to the downside, right? That's POS, and this is the lower high. As markets continue up, look at this. Another BOS took place here. It's another BOS, right? Another break of structure, meaning price is going lower and lower. So these are multiple cell point entries for you. Once you identify the supplies and all that kind of stuff, you also helps you know the target. When price got to the demand and started to fail to create lower highs, markets continue to break structure. But this time, the BOS is very different. You can see for yourself here, the BOS is to the upside. It is to the upside. So there's a break of structure continuing the trend that was started by a demand. So the break of structure now is to the upside. And this is the life of charts. All your charts do this. All your charts do this. Train your eyes to do this. This is part three, I guess, if you want to scenario analysis when it comes to intraday trading. You absolutely have to train your eyes to understand. I know my supply and demand for, for, for swing. So I kind of like have an idea of mid-term to long-term on the flow of money. But today, I'm trading today for intraday today right now. What is the best version, the best outlook for price? How will price look, et cetera, et cetera? And this is what this BOS will do. The last final confirmation for a good buy to hold is when you get a change of character. What is a change of character? If a BOS is technically speaking a trend continuation, a change of character means trend reversal. Trend reversal. Things have changed, my guy. Trend reversal. Right, so you can see here, instead of this lower high pushing price down and continue with the lower lows, there was a change of character. Markets broke up and then created a higher low and kept going up again. And that is basically what we talk about. <coughs> uh, sorry, when we talk about break of structure, change of character. And it's something I missed, right? Fundamentally, because once again, I'm very obsessed with trading ideas for me. It's always a thesis. Um, after I read One Good Trade by Mark Bolio, I, I, I really like that idea. It takes me forever to change my mind in the market. I follow as much data until I'm completely convinced. And when I'm convinced and my trading strategy aligns with my conviction, my psychology is free. All right, then I just simply trade in clusters and I make money where I make money and gracefully take my losses if there are any along the way. The goal is to become a consistent, profitable trader. A consistent, profitable trader does not win trades all the time. A consistent, profitable trader on average will always remain very profitable on average, right? Despite the losses along the way, as long as you can understand it. Now we come to our amazing Euro USD. And this is what I want you to do on your chart. You know, because I was obsessed with the imbalance, I was obsessed with one of my trading rules. I forgot the whole basket. You know, as soon as I saw CPI, low investors were like, woohoo, markets are going to really celebrate this. And you can see they did. Right? So there's this bullish and golfing pattern, to be honest with you, if you follow scenario analysis part one, when markets open in the bullish and golfing pattern or a bearish and golfing pattern, Nine out of ten times, markets follow suit in that direction. So I should have just opened a buy that day. I did not. I wanted to wait for a safer edge for price to come back to me because I knew it would, right? And it did come back to me, but it took me out. Right now, let's, let's, let's assess a couple of things about this chart. I'm not going to go too far into the chart, but I, I really want to build that structure. So if you, can't, if you want it to be as visual as it was right now for you on the whiteboard, come to trade you. Look at this path. Pat, you know, will create cool, cool um, arrow lines that will give you that similar visual effect that you had on the whiteboard. I'm going to start on a structural point here. So there's a supply here. There's an upward, you know, trend that I've drawn, but markets have hit a supply. For me, that's a good starting point because, after all, I'm a supply and demand trade. Then I'm going to simply take my, my, by my pointy arrow like that. I'm just going to follow the structure. So markets fell from there to here and then came up and then fell again. What do I now have already, all right? Anyone paying attention will tell you that already, I know, I know there's so many lines, it might not become clear, da 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 but really, 
My actual prayer for you is, is, is the bigger eyes, the eyes of your understanding that are open in this video, right? Not your physical eyes, right? So there we go. We've got a low here, a lower low, right? And then we've got a lower high because obviously the first higher high is over here, something like that, right? So this high is now lower than this high and then markets push down lower than this high. So my supply on the H1 here, you can see, has actually done a good job of giving me, you know, a downward trend. Right, this is a smaller time frame, but it's happening. And then all of a sudden, markets start to bounce up. All right, you could, if you wanted to do something like that, that would be insignificant. But this is interesting. All of a sudden, price closes there and then zigzags sideways and then comes all the way here. So this is nice because now I'm like, wait a minute. This is technically higher, right? It's, it's obviously higher. Higher than what, you know? Or higher than this part here, right? So I'm watching my structures. This is just market structure. I don't trade market structure purely. I trade supply and demand, right? So when this high happens, markets then find a low, try and equalize with this low. If you look at the body of the candlesticks, yes, they are weak, but they definitely don't close lower than this previous low. So in a change of character here, Goodness gracious, is this, are, are you guys with me? I hope you are. So just comment, pause the video right now and comment, I am with you at this moment so that I can know that I asked for a comment this far in into the video and that you guys are still understanding my teaching style. So if I lose you now, you know, I might not know where to find you. Right, so, so there we go. So, so, so now markets don't close lower here and they don't close lower here. <clears throat> the signal has already happened. If you're paying attention, they don't close lower than this area here because up here there was a change of character. But let's continue. Let's continue. This is one hour time frame scenario analysis part three. Let's get this done. Let's get this information done. And all you have to do is just keep practicing. Right? And then markets, you know, make their way. I'm not going to draw the zigzag up and down. Right? Let's, let's go to this point here and then come back down there. Pause. What's happened? From this low, which is technically a higher low compared to this area higher low compared to this area, markets then decide to stop here on the day of CPI last week, Wednesday. So CPI day drops a couple of hours into the day, but already the market opens with, market opens substantially on a higher low, following the structure of a change of character, projecting itself further up, right? So change of character meant trend reversal, which meant this downtrend is over. The supply was already marked red because of my rules. What are my rules around supply? Right, multiple tags or a PCP. Sometimes a PCP can only be used once. If it's the type of a PCP, there are four types of PCPs. PCP stands for potential continuation pattern. It's in the course. In the course, I talk slow. I go through 10, 15 charts every two hours. It's an entire beautiful lecture series. You have to get your hands on it. Right, so I, I already knew I can't sell here. That's why it's marked red, because there's some supply that are only good for one touch. There are some supplies that are good for two touches. There are some supplies that should never be touched, all right? But you need to know the rules of the game, right? So, 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 so this happens here. So I already know that if we clear this supply and markets open on a higher low, there's nothing here. There's nothing stopping price. There is no resistance in the market to stop price because we only care about where smart money is dumping money to buy or sell. And markets rallied off the good news. The good news drops somewhere here. By the see this big candlestick, the spinal big candlestick here, this one, that's when CPI actually dropped. Everything before that was price, pricing in everything. But right? markets were pricing in peak inflation because what the Fed said, because what the data was already hinting towards. CPI confirmed it, right? In a 2 o'clock, 2.30, whatever, CPI data dropped, and that's when markets hit a peak supply, right? So markets then finally rally into hot and stop. Why? If you study my scenario analysis part one, there's a rule to this. Euro USD, it doesn't matter what the event is or what the party is. There is only a certain number of pips per day price moves. Price does not move up an infinite number of pips. Nor does it move down an infinite number of pips. This data is in front of you on your chart if you just go back to my videos on the channel. Right, so if I zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, you'll notice that when I did scenario analysis part one, all the way here, you can see, I tried to teach you guys how to average out these pips, right? See that 
Every single trading day, as an intraday trader, I'll mark up the average pips, price to 75 pips today, 54 pips. Every time there's consolidation, it will move between 54 to 55 pips. There are some days when we just do a 32 pip drop and have a zigzag moment. Then there are the big 120 to 134 pips on news days. This is embedded in Euro USD's history. It does this all the time. If you find a market that repeats itself all the time, in line with your trading strategy, you would be a special kind of fool, which I know you're not, right, to, to ignore that type of data. Right, so as soon as markets finally rally the whole day, markets have to pull off. Why? Markets have been running since 9 a.m., right, to the upside. So somewhere up here, all the way up there, right, markets have done 155 pips, 50 pips, sorry, upwards. That's generally larger than normal. So we expect markets to cool down, but follow the structure. So markets then come down here like that. Oh, okay, cool. That's fine because this low here is still higher than this low there. So this happens. Boom. And when markets do that, pause. Why? Because this is what Leroy missed. And when Leroy missed this, Leroy took a trade. I don't know if you took that trade that he took, but Leroy never gives you guys financial advice. He simply tells you what he's going to do in the markets, right? But look at this. Markets then came in here. The first time, this is how high, this white line is how high this moment was. But the second time, markets closed lower. So what's going on here? Why didn't markets create a higher low the next day? <coughs> Sorry, a higher high, I apologize, a higher high. So essentially what I'm saying is, <clears throat> if the upward trend would have continued, markets should have done this, gone a little bit higher and then came down. But instead, they created a supply, and inside that supply, stopped structure from going above and started to fall down. So instead of getting a higher high, all of a sudden here, we got a lower low. Just go back to that whiteboard image. Pause right now. If you're confused right now, just stop the, pause the video, rewatch it. Just go back to the beginning where I do the stuff where you slowly on the whiteboard, because it's important, right? You, 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 you need to learn at your pace, or whatever that means for you. The whole point is to become a constantly profitable trader. Some people, it takes them six months to get this. Some people, it takes them three years. You want to be either one of those people who gets it, all right? Now, check what I'm going to do now. So markets close lower than the previous high, creating a lower high, all right? So, okay, that's weird. You didn't, you, you didn't break structure because one who wanted, once again, to be clear, was for price to break structure to the upside because BOS or break of structure is trend continuation. Leroy, if you wanted to buy Euro USD, you should have best of all received a break of structure, a trend continuation confirmation that that demand will do just that. Instead, you didn't get that, Leroy. Instead, price simply started to fall and fall and fall and fall. Oh. Stop. Now, all of a sudden, your higher low, this area here, which was your higher low, higher low, higher than this previous low, gets broken. So now you've got a change of character. You've got a change of character on the Euro USD chart about a few days ago, which is something I, I missed this up here, right? I, I, I could have sold for the clean supply. I was like, nah, I want to buy. Why? Because as an intraday trader, I still get stuck in the swing mind. In my swing head, ladies and gentlemen, I still have better sell options up there. So any demand that the markets present to me, the mistake that I make sometimes is the fact that I assume that every single demand is a trampoline that's going to just push me to the supplies that I want. And because of that, every now and then I lose money unnecessarily in the markets because that's not what the markets are doing. The markets literally change character. All of a sudden, your higher low has now been, you know, you know, dumped. And now markets are now moving to the downside. So markets move down. Markets create a new structure. Uh oh what's going on here? Right, now you've got a lower high. Lower high. So this high is lower than that high. Right, so now <coughs> we've got this. What's going on there? Look at this. There was a break of structure here. What's this break of structure? BOS, confirming a downtrend. So we have a supply that creates a lower high that gives us a break of structure. Hello? Confirming a downtrend. So what do you think was going to happen to me? 
right? Because I'm a sit and forget guy. It doesn't matter if it's intraday or swing. I place my, my, my buy orders after meditation at 4 or 5 a.m. And then I film my podcast and I move on with my day, right? So obviously, ignoring the break of structure from the previous day, markets making contact with that supply that created a break of structure to the downside. The next day, 9 a.m. ish, right day, the London session opens, consolidates, takes all the stop losses here, including mine, and boom, markets continue downward. And that's what's been happening ever since. And then look at this beautiful touch on this trend line. Wait a minute, Leroy, where does this trend line come from? Well, if you look at my Messi video from the very first point where markets fail to break structure to the upside and come back down. Right, so, so I hope you use this in your trading because it is absolutely phenomenal to use. When I'm paying attention, I actually pick the things up way ahead of time, right? And, and I really hope my module three, when you get it, does an incredible job of explaining this stuff to you because I know I spent a lot of time around smart money concepts really trying to arm you guys. But once again, that's what's been happening. Anyways, um, I had a couple of good sales from EURUSD yesterday, still holding. Or, or was still holding anyways until last night with the FOMC meeting. I did tell everyone in the public telegram group that at 8 p.m. was going to be FOMC meeting, so take profits or close, and that's exactly what I did, right? So now we're starting to see what the markets are going to look like today. According to my rules, this is now a no-go area, right? I've got a fresh touch and a retest and a what if, right? So this area might still hold by the time you watch this video, but I can't trade it anymore because I am bound by rules. And the rules create discipline, and discipline actually creates profit. Right, so real quick, ladies and gentlemen, the FOMC dropped their minutes. Yeah, yesterday at 8 p.m., you just go to Forex Factory, go to the latest release, this will pop up, and then you get the PDF, or you can read it there. These minutes are always a reflection of what the Fed told us in the previous meeting. So these are minutes of the July 26, 27 meeting that we streamed live. However, because the minutes come out so late, <clears throat> there are always adjustments in the meeting. And these minutes come out after an NFP job data and a CPI reading. So the market wants us to, we should be paying attention quite closely to see what they've snuck into those minutes, but they've snuck into the adjustments so that we can actually see the direction of the, the governor, which is the Reserve Bank Day in America, I didn't see what to do. So I've read it's a 12 page document. <clears throat> I read it before I went to sleep last night. Because there, there are two good questions waiting for me in the public telegram by Alvin and Trevor. And I, I, I've, I've held back to respond to that because when I'm, I'm going to respond to it based on just how I approach the markets, right? But I wanted to see if it would come out on Wednesday, right, in these minutes. And unfortunately, it did it. Uh, so, 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 so I will now, um, I'll, I'll go back to the rest of the stuff. Right, so I've highlighted just about four or five things that I want to talk to you guys about, and we can end this video. Right, so it kind of starts off with this, development in financial markets and open market operations, right? Most market participants <coughs> appear to view a moderation, a moderation, right? <laughs> Listen, guys, these are the Fed's words now. This is important, bro. This is it. You can, you, can, you can trade level one using signals, right? You will blow your accounts every now and again. You will make a little bit of money every now and again. Level two is when you take a good course. It doesn't have to be my course, right? But there are really good courses out there. It's just that they cost a lot of money. The, 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 I can tell you the ones that I've done that I highly recommend. Online Trading Academy, Supply and Demand course for $20,000. That's where I learned most of my stuff. Uh, 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 institutional portfolio uh, 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 trading management uh, with Anton Kiel from you know the, the Goldman Sachs guy. That's where I learned a lot of my my stock stuff. It's about three thousand US dollars per year, and, and it's like I'm still it, it's an amazing course, right? And it's us three six five institutional trading where I combine everything that I've learned to make me a profitable trader for you. That's level two, right? Those are people who understand that you, you, you have to become more to get more of the market. You can't rely on signals. Okay. And level three is the understanding of the fact that supply and demand technical analysis exists in a geopolitical world. And so bit by bit, you have to start to take these people seriously and understand what they're saying so it matches with your trading. All right. So the, and that's the perfect call. So they say most market participants, wherever they are, whether you agree with them or not, 
That's not the point, because I don't always agree with the Fed. But my, the problem is the Fed is saying most, maybe minus Leroy, right? Most market participants, right, appeared to view a moderation of inflation, a moderation of inflation. Now, the language they use is very important. And slower, but still positive economic growth ahead. And that's kind of like power lines during those press conferences. What recession? What job numbers are doing good? The economy is doing great. We're creating more jobs than we can find supply for. And for now, I just feel like the economic output is positive and great. Fine. And the CPI data, mind you, is confirming what Paul is saying once again. All right. So I just want to be very transparent and clear that I have my own thesis, but right now, all the data and the market is team power. Okay. Now, economic ahead as the most likely scenario. Things are going to be good, fam. However, investors. So first you say market participants. Just everybody in the market. The traders, speculators, Wall Street, London, blah, blah, blah. Market participants, the treasury, the bond, the government. Then he's, now he's talking about big money. However, investors appear to be increasingly attentive to the downside risk. So, I, I, and that's my perspective in the market. First of all, I'm contrarian in my trading agenda. If retail traders are buying, I am selling. If market is risk on, I'm looking for risk off until my demand and supplies tell me otherwise. So when investors, who are the people who pump markets with the most money, are actually saying uh, they appear to be increasingly, increasingly more attentive to downside risk to the economy in light of potential shocks from a board like the war and continued upside surprises to inflation. I thought that paragraph was so packed. It's like, yeah, we've got CPI, I'm telling you the Fed, but once in a while, there are surprises to inflation. We thought inflation would have picked in March. Surprise, surprise, the war continued. We thought it was going to pick in June. Surprise, surprise, you know, it didn't. And then all of a sudden, we've got CPI reading sometime in July of, say, 9.1%, and that being the peak, right? So he's saying, there are some things that I can't predict. There are surprises in inflation. The, the war stuff is still not clear. And so our investors, the ones pumping the most money in the economy, are still looking at those downside risks. Right? So for me, this was red flag number one, but for the most part, also a confirmation that the Fed hasn't changed their mind from the last time they heard the control. Right, let's look at the second thing. Right. Check the language switching, guys. Market participants. He's no longer talking about investors now. He's going back to the big group, right? Where it's him, the treasury, the government, straight down, stop, some institutions, right? Not all hedge funds, blah, blah, blah. But market participants, speculators, and, 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 and all their millions perceive falling commodity prices, particularly for oil. This came out last night, Wednesday. My war room on Sunday, I spent 45 minutes explaining this thing to you. To be very careful that the CPI date, I went through the CPI report for you on Sunday, War Room 75. Please watch it. Why, at least watch the first part. It's absolutely important. And I proved before these minutes came out that, guys, inflation only fell in CPI because of oil. But wait a minute. We are still the same traders who have been trading oil below $100 per barrel for, for about three to four weeks now. Brent oil under $100. So he say their perception of falling commodity prices, particularly for oil, blah, blah, blah. So, so I'm just bringing that up. Now, an expected inflation to decline substantially next year. So this is bullish for the market, all right? Because if the market understands this and the market is part of the market, just the market is like, yeah, man, oil is falling, commodity prices are falling, CPI is falling, and we are going to have a decline, and we're going to see a reasonable decline in inflation by next year. So, yeah, stocks are going to rally a little bit more, in my humble opinion. But we already mapped out how fast stocks can go with the next short-term rally or mid-term rally, <laughs> even with Bitcoin. Right, next part, very important. Nearly all respondents to the desk survey anticipated a 75 basis point increase in the target rate at the current meeting. Current meeting. Wait a minute. Boom. This meeting here. Right, so most people agree, and we all think, even before the live, I say, we're well, most likely going to get a 75 basis point rate. And that's what they say. 
But that's not why we're reading that paragraph. We're reading it because look, there's a speculation and most expected a 50 basis point increase in September to follow. So 60% of market participants in September are expecting the Fed to drop the rate to 50%, which, ladies and gentlemen, again, just to be clear, despite what Leroy said, I really want to separate myself from this because it's very important. You don't blow your account because we, I want to tell you what the data is saying purely with, without my agenda. This is also very bullish because all of a sudden we're going to get a slightly tight, tightened hawkish rate, right? From 75 to 50, it means, you know, market, the Fed, believes they've done what they can, you know, inflation is going down, and that's also very bullish for the market, all right? I'm just drawing out some lessons from the minute. As long as there's anything else, I read all of this stuff, but I didn't find it not that exciting. There we go. Right, now, the staff viewed the risk to inflation projection as skewed to the upside. Oh, what, what? You just gave us a lot of bullish news. You just said next year is dropping. Do we do going to drop by, by next year? You also said because of that, you're most likely going to drop the interest rate this September. Okay. Now, the stuff, the stuff with the people compiling the data, right? The, the stuff economic output, the projection of the use of economic activity prepared by the stuff for the July. So this was the members were given FOMC, Powell, and the group all the data for them to get to the conclusion of a 75 basis point rate hike, right? Well, this, this is the stuff's uh, assessment because those people are the ones who look at the most data. They can compile the PCE, the CPI, look at GDP. They, 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 these people are important. The stuff view the risk to the inflation projection as skewed to the upside. Well, this is confusing. So the difference between the stuff, the people who have to collect the real data, and what the FOMC say. Because to me, guys, and I want to be honest with you, this is my bias, FOMC's job, to me, sounds to be very much politically driven right now. It seems to me that the Democrats, Biden and his people, are putting pressure on the FOMC to hold the ship together, sometimes with lies. We have seen Joe Biden and his administration go out of their way to try and redefine what a recession is. We have seen the chairperson of the FOMC really meander around the definition of a recession. So for me, there seems to be a lot of political influence, which is why I keep saying, you know, I am breaking away from, you know, controlling my flow traders up until September. They are allowed to buy and sell however they want. I'm just going to manage, you know, the risk side of their trades, but I will definitely not be telling them what to do. Because I am very much biased into watching the markets flow. Because th this juncture between truth, right, and facts is an important thing. So the stuff built the risk to inflation prediction is to the upside. Given the persistent upward surprise is seen in inflation data, right? So I'm sorry, but my 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 my, my uh, I'm making a mess here, right? So 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 the. the because of so many surprises, you think inflation should stop and boom, surprise. The possibility that inflation expectations would become unanchored as a result of the large increase in active inflation over the past year and the risk that supply conditions, supply chains, right? Commodity prices are going down because of oil, but as food started to go down, as the Ukraine wheat situation in, in, in improved, you know, supply chains, having more Fed fund rates or CPI data going down doesn't change the chip shortage in the tech industry in the world right now. What are we going to do about these basic things? So they're saying, look, man, the possibility that inflation expectations will become anchored as a result of the large increase in output inflation over the past year and the risk that supply conditions would not improve as much as a baseline projection assumed. This is interesting, very interesting. But if you only read, you know, a report and just get the sound bite, you might miss this. But to me, this is a big red flag. All right. And lastly, uh, 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 and I just want to answer, continue the same trend. Participants' views on current conditions and the economic outlook. In their discussion of current conditions, 
participants, right, noted that recent indicators of spending production had soft, right? So this is something now about the participants who were consulted here. And listen to how this paragraph the thing ends. Now, where's the sentence? I, I know I just highlighted this. Sentence. Participants anticipated that U.S. real GDP, remember GDP is important because two negative GDPs equal recession. So real GDP would expand in the second half of the year. So these guys are saying, yeah, 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 yeah. You had quarter one and quarter two negative. Therefore, people like Leroy are going to rush to say recession, recession. But don't worry, we got you. In the last two quarters, the second half of the year, quarter three and four, right, real GDP will expand. But many expected that growth in a economic activity would be at below trade pace as the period ahead would likely see the response of aggregate demand to tighter financial conditions become stronger or more broad-based. I was like, oh, okay, that's a mouthful. Now, participants noted that a period of below-trend GDP, which is what we have right now, two negative financial quarters, right, growth, would help reduce inflationary pressures. Guys, are you hearing this? So, so, so these guys are saying what people like Lero and the rest of the world call recession, that we as the FOMC are saying it's a blessing in disguise. Low, a period of below trend, of low economic growth, a crushing of continuous demand, a period of low, uh, below trend GDP growth would help reduce inflationary pressures. So this moment of recession might actually help us get inflation down, right? And set the stage for the sustained achievement of the committees, wait a minute, which committee? The FOMC, right? So this thing that you guys are calling recession, low GDP, me crushing your demand, is going to help you reduce inflation. <clears throat> so if my, if my in continuous increment of rates is not felt right now, at least enjoy recession because it will, it will reduce inflationary pressures and set the stage for the sustained achievement of the committee's objectives of, again, maximum employment and price stability. That's, that's man, because most traders don't read these reports. The 90% that lose all the time. They don't even know what they're trading. They just told themselves how poetry is their stance indicator make money. Right. This is interesting that the market you're in, this is what they're saying, right? Care about the interest rates. There is no recession. But if there was a recession and if it's dropping the GDP, we are using that to achieve our goal. This is from there. This is not my goal. This is what the Federal Open Market Committee wrote in their minutes. And the last thing, the last red flag that I want to bring to you is participants judged that a significant risk facing the committee was that was that elevated inflation? Just pause, man. Because nine pages ago, there was inflation is going down, everything is good. You know, bullish, bullish, bullish. We're even going to potentially drop the interest rate in September. But now they're saying the committee judged that a significant risk facing the committee was that elevated inflation could become entrenched. Inflation going up could become embedded, entrenched, joined, right? Made permanent. But, but, but listen how. If the public begin to question the committee's resolve to adjust the stance of policy sufficiently, wait a minute, Paul, you are saying, if I keep making videos like this, where I simply say there are sometimes red flags in the FMC state, or where I point out in my next, next video, how the Fed has been lying to people just before crises in 2008 was the big life with multiple documentaries. You are saying if we keep poking holes at the Fed story, that is what's going to cause inflation to go up. There's an economic link between exposing the truth and inflation. That's what this thing says. I'll say it again. Participants judge that a significant risk facing the committee was that elevated inflation could become entrenched. Not if we keep increasing the rates, not if recession gets deep, not if we don't get control of demand, but if the public begin to question us, 
the key question is a result to adjust the stance of policy sufficiently. If this risk materialized, it would complicate the task of returning inflation to 2%. So basically, be sheep. Don't question us. We've, we got this. Because if you question us, inflation will go crazy and could raise substantially economic costs of doing so. Many participants remark that in view of the constantly changing nature of the economic environment and the existence of long and variable legs, lags in monetary policy effect on the economy, there was also a risk that the committee could tighten the stance of policy by more than the necessary to restore price stability. What? Now let me break the last part down. Number one, don't don't you know question us, believe us, or it'll cause problems. That's number one. But number two, guys, number two in this red flag is here. Many participants remark the view of constant changing nature of the economic environment. This is true. There's not even their fault. That's just how markets are constantly changing. All this COVID change. There's monkeypox change. There's this change. There's a war change. There isn't a war change. The inflation is not real change. You, you get the point. And the existence of long variable lags in monetary policy pause. I brought this up in the war room. If the Fed keeps increasing interest rates in March, and they have a couple of times, from 25 to 50, 75, 75, right? They've done a couple of hikes. The market and the economy still have not felt the full impact of those hikes, right? If you think demand was destroyed, there still might be more pain to come. I don't know. And they are saying it here, they say, look, man, there are variable lags. It takes time for monetary policy to translate Right, to have an effect on the economy. There was also a risk that the committee could tighten. We might even have made already the mistake, or in future we might make the mistake to keep increasing rates more than necessary, right? To tighten the stance of policy by more than necessary to restore price, price stability. These participants highlighted this risk, uh, sorry, this risk, as an underscoring the importance of the committee's data-dependent approach to judging the pace and magnitude of policy forming over coming forward. And I think that's why the markets are really, you know, prayed and, and really pricing in a 50% base rate hike to really follow the report. Right. So, so that's what the report really was about. You know, everything else was stuff that we really covered um, 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 in, in, in the war rooms and in the live sessions. But the most important part of this video, ladies and gentlemen, is what we did today together when it comes to break of market structure, BOS, and how to always find yourself on the right side of the supply and demand trading. My name is Leroy James Siri. I am so passionate, man, about helping you master your wealth. And so if you ever find yourself really struggling financially, check out our 365 Trading Academy course on how to trade efficiently. Check out our podcast on how to get your mind right on wealth issues. And I'll see you in the next video. 365. Peace.